Namaste, everyone, and welcome. Here we are in the United States, uh, 4th of July, uh, celebrating Independence Day. So uh, I know a lot of you here in the United States are spending time with family, barbecuing and partying, drinking, <laughs> whatever else you guys, <clears throat> whatever, whatever else is doing um, about celebrating freedom. So that's fantastic. And we'll just um, share a short message with you. So before we start, let's ask for blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Presenting to my teacher, Master Tawakok Sri Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassion, purifying light, and soothing healing energy. We thank you for all the blessings, all of them, in full faith. And so it is. All right, so we'll just have a short message and then we'll do our meditation. So I was thinking about freedom, independence, uh, and being free, being able to do whatever heck you like. And it's interesting, as I was doing my practice, meditation, I came across uh, what Rumi said. Why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? Why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? And you think about it, go, who's in prison? <laughs> Again, if you've been with us for a while, you realize that we always share with people, prison is not necessary, necessarily something material. Obviously, if somebody does something stupid, you know, hurtful, criminal, you lock them up. I mean, that's obvious. And if you think about it, why is it such a big deal that when people don't like to be in prison? Because freedom is something the soul, the spiritual self, yearns for. And that's basically the angle that we're, we're looking at right now. Not because of, hey, you know, you have to be free to do this and that, and the material freedoms, the political stuff. Uh, because when all is said and done, when you leave your body, all those things don't matter. So let's talk about it, something that is more permanent. Simultaneously, how to use that in our daily life. So you have freedom, you know, to do, to buy stuff, to have a house, a family. That's the material part of it, which is very, very important. And that's one of the things that is being celebrated today. I want to go a little deeper and look at how people imprison themselves every day without knowing it. And um, I'll just cite a few examples, uh, not in a particular priority or particular order. And um, the first one is, which is obvious, I think Lao Tzu or Confucius, some, some Chinese dude said, you know, some, they're, they're, those guys are so smart, sometimes they get them mixed up. Okay. He said, when you care about what people say, you are their prisoner. When you always care about what people say, you are literally their prisoner. So it's good to conform to a certain extent. I mean, you don't want to wear, you know, underwear going out. You know, it could be a problem unless you're on the beach, right? So, but if let's say you're not like going way out of there, you just want to express yourself, okay, fine. Or the way you talk, the way you act, if it's something that is, Again, not hurting other people and not stepping on other people's uh, freedom and rights. Well, okay, you want to be a little different, a little weird, well, whatever. And the interesting part is sometimes we go, well, I don't know. You know, I'm going to be with relatives. Maybe I should uh, cuss like everybody else. I should say bad words like everybody else. I should eat like them. So if you think about it, you're a, pri you're a prisoner. But if you think, hey, you know, I choose to use right words. I, used to be, I choose to be kind. I choose not to be gossiping. Those type of freedoms allow you to be you, the spiritual self, as you evolve. Sometimes I've seen, I've done this a long, long time ago, and then I, until at some point my teacher told me, hey, you don't have to do that. You know, I used to be, well, I mean, relatives and friends, if they say bad words, I say bad words. If they start gossiping and saying bad things about someone, I have to join the party and then thought about it. Deep down, I don't feel good. Externally, well, I have to do it because I feel like I want to be accepted. So literally, I'm their prisoner. Make sense? So until my teacher said, look, you practice the virtues, no one's perfect, but at some point you have to realize, first and foremost, you are the soul. I said, okay, got that part. The only problem with that is, not really a problem, you start kind of losing friends. <laughs> because sometimes they go, ah, you're a party pooper, you don't party like we do. I know you call that freedom, getting drunk and not being able to control your thoughts, your words, your actions, and doing stupid things. 
I mean, you get to that point, I don't call that freedom. I call that being imprisoned by the alcohol or drugs, whatever, thing, anything else. Make sense? So that's one part. Another part of being in prison is being in prison because of being a hostage by emotions and our thoughts. And that's a part that people really don't realize. They think, oh, you know, they're coaching, encroaching my independence, my freedom. You don't realize oftentimes the thoughts and emotions we've created are thought forms inside our aura. So just imagine the easiest to understand we're inside a bubble called your aura, your energy field. And the thoughts and the emotions we create are sitting all, all over. So if the majority of those thoughts and emotions are anger, hatred, uh, being critical of other people, judging other people, or you know, whatever ideas and thoughts we have. That's the prison we created. We keep worrying about, oh, you know, I have the freedom to do this. How about the freedom not to be swimming in your own crap? <laughs> That's freedom. Think about it. That's why a lot of times after we go through the meditation, the feedback we usually get on whatever platform is like, oh, I feel so light. I feel so free. And during the meditation, I felt like there's no boundaries. Exactly the point. Most people only think of prison or something encroaching on their freedom only in the material world. There are people out there. I've met people who are billionaires. You know, with a B, I always say this, just going to emphasize because people use that word so lightly. And I remember when I was in um, one of Tony Robbins' events, he says, you know, people talk about millions and millionaires and billionaires. They're galaxies apart. <laughs> well, no, he said universes apart. Which is true because one million times a thousand, that's when you get a billion. Okay, so I've met billionaires who are, hey, on the surface, they look happy, supposedly they have money, but deep down they're miserable. So they're a prison, not materially, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And then you have people who are, and this is the interesting part. I remember when I was in Bhutan, on the, <laughs> my favorite place in the world. And, you know, they have a, I think, a happiness quotient, a happiness factor. I meet people there who are just happy. They might not have a lot of things in their life. They might not have a lot of material things, but they're happy. They're content. Same thing. I've, had, I've met monks. You know, monks are not supposed to have anything, right? They have their saffron robes and their iPhone. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was in, the, I were in one of the monasteries, right? Oh, very solemn. <laughs> and then they have an espresso machine and they have an <laughs> iPhone. Go, That's how you live. Okay, anyway. So they have these things, but they're not, they're not imprisoned by them. And they're just happy. Okay, what do you strive for? They strive for liberation. So when you say liberation, well, they can free to go wherever they like. We're going to talk about spiritual liberation. So let's put the whole thing together. It goes back to the same lesson. The lesson has not changed. Okay? The lesson has not changed since day one we've been doing this. You are the soul, the spiritual self, on an earthly journey. And this earthly journey involves using your body to move around, using your emotions to feel and interact with other beings, other people, your mind to interact with other beings with thoughts and processing information. Here's the problem. The body has its own tendencies. The emotions have their own tendencies. The mind has its own tendencies. It's just like you. When you get in the car, your car, <laughs> if you step on the accelerator, it goes that way. And depending on the size of the car, the momentum, the quality of the engine, so on, so on, and all these things, it has its own tendencies. You get into a boat, you're in water, it has its own tendency. It floats, <laughs> you turn the steering wheel this way, you accelerate too much, it goes too fast, you might flip, whatever. It has its tendencies. You go in the air, the plane has its tendencies. In all three cases, you are the driver of the car, the captain of the ship, the, uh, the pilot of the plane. All these three vehicles have their own tendencies. If you don't control them, they control you. So the soul... If it doesn't control the body, the tendency of the body will control the soul. If the soul does not control the emotions, the emotion control 
the soul. If the soul does not control the thoughts, the thoughts control the soul. By not controlling these vehicles, that's the prison we create. It's not that you don't want them, you need them. It's as simple as that. So when people tell me, oh, I can't help it, there's your problem. Oh, you don't understand, I can't help it, that's your problem. You allow, the big word is allow, you the soul allow the emotions to create the prison for you. It's not easy. I never said it's easy. People struggle with it every day. And here you are, you're watching TV, oh, freedom for this, freedom for that. How about internal freedom? How about that part? Make sense? How about that part? And people say, but you don't understand, you know, I, I, I need to connect with people. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. I've shared this with you before, ancient Buddhist teaching. I connect. Enjoy. Let go. The problem, what we call prison, is not the ability to connect. The problem is the inability to disconnect when needed. That's where the prison develops. When we forget, when we start having <clears throat> spiritual amnesia and thinking the emotion is the I, the body is the I, the thoughts are the I, that's the prison right there. Simple as that. You love your spouse, you love your children, you love your family members. Great, go for it. That's the freedom for you to love. Now, if they're treating you terribly, badly, then you have to decide, okay, well, I love them regardless, unconditionally, but let me back off a little bit, give them some space, or give myself some space. That's it. Or here's a big one, peer pressure. By not conforming to what your friends are doing, even though you know it's wrong, yeah, but you know, you don't realize I connect with them. Yeah, but it's, they're if they're leading you down a dark road, you're, you're you are the prisoner. Simple as that. So the ability to connect with them, yeah, these are great friends, man. We enjoy a good laugh. We talk about movies. We talk about this and that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is going the wrong way. They're now asking me to do something stupid and dumb, which karmically, I think I don't want to pay for this for the next five lifetimes. That's the freedom. Not the freedom not to be with them. The freedom to be able to disconnect, connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect. That shows you always remember your identity. The soul, the spiritual self. That's it. You know, people get into the politics of freedom, independence, different from country, country, different from ideology. That's their right to do so. But you as an individual, as the soul, the spirit yourself, you have to start with, okay, these are great, these are important, what policies are important, what policies are not important, what affects me, what, that's good, understandable. But deep down, when the body dies, all these don't matter. You realize that? What matters is the quality and the development of the spirit yourself or the soul. Now, if you take it one step further, sorry, I, I know you're supposed to be short. It's as simple as this. Most people think, oh, okay, I get it. When the body dies, we're free. Not yet. Don't get too excited. It's not that simple. When the body dies, only the shedding of the physical form is done. Your emotional form, your mental form are still intact. <laughs> So, in other words, the body dies, but the soul is still riding the boat, <laughs> riding the plane. You just got rid of the car. That means whatever emotional crap that we did not let go while we're still in the body, we get to carry with us. Not all of it, part of it is purged out. Anyway, if you're interested, attend achieve the one, achieving oneness with the higher soul. So, the soul is now in the emotional world, the mental world. And before you go higher in frequency, we have to let go of these things that hold us down. It's just like you shed the physical body, 
or at least that prison's gone. And then you have the emotional body with all the emotions that we created during our earthly life. Those have to be also released. Then the soul is free to go to the mental world. And then all the thoughts and emo- all the thoughts have to be released so the soul is free. So it's, a, it's steps going up. Now, here's the best news of all. And then after this, <laughs> let's do our practice. So the question is, how do you, one, accelerate that spiritual freedom? Number two, how do you accelerate that freedom, experience it without having the body to die? That is the question. How do you experience that spiritual freedom of having inner peace and stillness whenever you want? Be in the midst of things exploding around you, people going crazy and you're staying calm, being free from being infected from their negative stuff. That's what's important. Because it's great, oh yeah, I want to be free, I want to be one with God, I want to be all, that's great and wonderful. But in the meantime, if you're imprisoned by all this emotional, mental and physical crap, there you go. That's nice, but that's like, whoo, time ago. I want something now. Simple. <laughs> you heard this a thousand times or more. When you do your meditation and spiritual practice and do it, listen, write this down, properly and consistently. When I say properly and consistently, we're back to the same thing. People say, yeah, you know, I'm stressed out of my mind. I need to meditate. You're looking at meditation to fix something. Again, we've told you that so many times. If you look at meditation like a medicine to fix something, good luck. You're going to take it over and over again. But if you look at it as part of your lifestyle, then it changes the entire paradigm. Because now, meditation is as vital as you breathing, eating, and whatever else that you do to sustain your physical body. It's part of your routine, which actually allows you to be free while you're still in the body of all this emotional, mental crap that people dump on you, dump on you, or the stuff that you create yourself because of forgetfulness. Forgetting that, hey, no matter how much this emotional garbage is, these are still not I. These are my fabrications. That's freedom. And so whenever we fall into an argument and we start going crazy, oh yeah, but this, and you go, then you go, and somehow you go, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. These are not the I. I'm allowing these negative emotions to take over. These are not me. Okay, let me, let me just back off. What is the right thing to say? What is the right way to think? What is the right thing to feel? Man, what is the right thing to do? Oh, okay, don't slap them. <laughs> That's a good idea. Make sense? So, if you've been doing the meditation with me, gosh, going three years now? Two years? I forgot. I lost count. If you've been doing it consistently, First thing you should be noticing, number one, you're less reactive. Number two, you get to observe. You get to observe this, I should do this, I shouldn't do that. You get to observe, ah, that's my old tendency before. Somebody says something, I want to open my mouth and just scream at them. Uh, Now I kind of take a microsecond to assess. Maybe that's not the right thing to do. I'll just observe. And number three, you get to decide what is the appropriate thing to say, what the appropriate action is. Because right then and then, the soul says, let me look at the lay, land, uh, the lay of the land. Okay, hmm, okay, let's see. If I do this, that happens. Okay, then I'll say this. I'll do that. Oh, I'll refrain from this. I'll refrain from that. That's freedom. So today, 4th of July, we celebrate freedom, independence here in the United States. I just want to use that as a springboard to to talk about spiritual freedom. So let's go back to what um, Rumi said. Why stay in prison when the door is wide open? And you notice there's an image there I used. um, I just look for an image there with the heart. Because oftentimes... The toughest prison is anger and resentment towards ourselves, towards other people. Translation, the heart shrinks because we don't forgive. 
the heart is the gateway. When we learn to forgive and let go, the heart gets activated. The heart chakra is the chakra of happiness. <coughs> okay? And the heart, when the heart is more activated, it also stimulates your spiritual heart, which is the crown, which allows the soul to be even more free. I mean, I've worked on people <coughs> that supposedly things are doing well in their life, they're happy, they're great, supposedly. And you say, yeah, and all that stuff. When you talk to them, you know, just by looking, you can sense there's something off. Then when we're doing healing, we're talking, then guess what happens? You can sense this person is hurting inside. Because somebody's hurt them, they vow never to forgive. Because they feel they have a right to be angry. Okay, understandable. First of all, the person you're pissed off don't know and don't care. Who's suffering? Who is in prison? That person. That's that. That's why we always use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi in Meditation Twin Hearts. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. That's always built in. Then you go, yeah, but it doesn't stop. You know, there are people, if this person hurts me and they stop, somebody else does. Yeah, you remember what the Lord Jesus said? I think it was Peter who asked. I hope I got my numbers. After this, we'll do a meditation. I didn't expect this to be a long, long lecture. <clears throat> the question was asked, Rabbi, Rabbi means teacher, right? Rabbi, if somebody has hurt me seven times, how many times should I forgive? Again, don't quote me in this. You know, th these are, <laughs> I'm just trying to get the context of this. The Lord Jesus said, you forgive seven times seven, if I remember correctly. That's 49 times. Now, there are many ways to understand it. One level of truth is when somebody hurts you, you forgive. Now, you remember, go back to the lecture before, the difference between inner forgiveness and outer forgiveness. Because I know some of you are always going to bring it up. Yeah, but you know, if I forgive them, they'll hurt me again. Remember what he said. Inner forgiveness, spiritually forgive them. External forgiveness, you might have to sue them. <laughs> Get a restraining order. Separate the two. Anyway, I have no time to go through it. I've taken so much of your time already. Go study that. So one context is you forgive anyway, but set boundaries. The deeper truth is this. The, listen carefully. After this, we have to <laughs> do our meditation. Sorry, too much uh, chocolate. <laughs> okay. When the Lord Jesus said you have to forgive seven times seven, that has a deeper meaning because there are seven spiritual levels of awakening. In your system, energy system, there's this energy, energy, potential energy called Kundalini energy. It has seven layers with seven sub-layers, a total of 49. Okay? Seven times seven. In other words, every time there's a spiritual awakening, there's a test. You pass that test, on to the next one, on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I wish it wasn't, but it is what it is. In fact, I'll end it with this. I remember one great spiritual teacher said, in order to attain full liberation, or you can put it in Judeo-Christian terms, when you're at the pearly gates before St. Peter let you in, okay, that's a, another visual, the essence is, before you enter into heaven, or full liberation, spiritual liberation, your worst enemies will be projected to you. In other words, it will be shown to you. These are the people who have hurt you. And they will observe your reaction. If you have not yet forgive, sorry, door close, go back. <laughs> go, whoa. That's that. That means you created your own prison. You first have to get out of it before you get into <laughs> heaven. Now, spiritually, 
this seven times seven means every time <clears throat> we spiritually wake up, because every time this energy unfolds, more energy comes through, old karma comes to the surface. In other words, old spiritual deaths come to the surface. These come in the form of exams or tests that we have to pass. This is the time when we lose people. That's when people stop watching the video. They start they stop because oh, I don't want to hear this. Suit yourself. Some people think by school hopping or religion hopping, they suddenly don't have to deal with karma. I wish you luck. But the ones who want to, it's as simple as, you know, it is what it is. The good news is, as my teacher says, the law of karma is a spiritual technology to create and navigate my future. That's a quote from my teacher. It's a spiritual technology, not a material one, spiritual technology. In other words, it has principles, mechanism, steps, technique, right? To create. Create means what? This is what I want. This is what I plant. Because it's a law. Whatever I want to harvest, that's, I that's what I plant. Okay, that's how I create. Now, how do I navigate? Navigate means cert there's certain negative karma coming to the surface, anywhere from whatever it is, emotionally, mentally, financially, physically. Okay, then you go. All right, these are spiritual deaths coming to the surface. That's like an impediment to my moving forward. All right, so I have to pay off those debts. I've been hurt hurtful to someone before. That might be what's causing this physical problem. Okay, step one, stop hurting people. <laughs> step two, do something to hurt to help other people who've been hurt. Give money to charity, do healing, do counseling, whatever it is. So what it is is you pay off this, pay off the spiritual debt, and you get around that obstacle. Oh, you're financial, having financial issues. All right, I must have hurt somebody financially in the past. This lifetime before, it doesn't matter. Okay, step one, don't steal. Don't hurt people financially. Next, give money to charity, help people in need. Okay, that's how I get around the obstacle. So the law of karma is a spiritual technology to create and navigate your future so you can be free. That's it. Simple. I didn't say easy. At least simple. You know, it's clearly laid out. All right. Anyway, sorry, it's been a full-blown lecture and it's supposed to be a short talk and then we meditate and you guys go party. <laughs> so, let's meditate. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tuakok Sui Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for this opportunity to learn, to grow, to spiritually be free, simultaneously be of service to all. We thank you for the bless these blessings. In full faith, so be it. <clears throat> right? Take your left hand, tap your heart center, take your right hand, tap your crown, put your hand like this. I am that. I'm not the body, I'm not emotions, I'm not thoughts. I am the soul. I exist independently of the body, the emotions, and thoughts. However, I appreciate my body, I appreciate my emotions, I appreciate my thoughts. These are my tools and vehicles in my earthly journey. I am the soul that moves the body, creates the feelings, and creates the thoughts. That is I, the spiritual self. Be still. I am the soul, a spiritual being of divine intelligence to regulate my thoughts and my mind, a spiritual being of divine love to regulate my feelings and emotions, a spiritual being of divine power to regulate the movements of the body and the actions my body takes. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self.
Just leave your awareness above your crown. Just stay there. I am the soul. A formless being of light. Just pure energy and light. Consciousness. Without form. I am that. The true self. Be still. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spark within me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. And so it is. We are one. Now open your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart. Our hearts are one. Our souls are one. Our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Now be aware of your heart in your hands. Be aware of the love within your heart. Unconditional love in your heart. Let it flow in the form of beautiful pink light from your heart through your hands and fill the entire earth. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, a channel of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere, in my home, in my workplace, in my city, state, country, anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Now repeat after me. To whoever I've hurt, in however way I've hurt you, whenever I've hurt you, I'm truly sorry. I've learned from my mistakes. I humbly ask for your forgiveness. Now send them lots of love. Just say, I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. Fill them with beautiful pink light. To whoever have hurt me. We are all children of God. We are all growing and evolving. Evolution involves time, process, and lots of mistakes. I have made my share of mistakes and learned from them. So can you. To all who have hurt me, I send you love, joy, and peace. You are completely forgiven. Go in peace. I release you from my life. So be it. May you be blessed with peace, with love. May you also spiritually grow and learn from your mistakes. So it is. So be it. Continue visualizing the earth in front of you. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. There are a lot of people right now going through challenges and times in their life with health issues, emotional and mental issues, a lot of them are suffering financially. May all of them be blessed with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. May divine love, mercy, compassion and healing be upon all of you. So be it. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Darkness is the ignorance of one's true nature, a being of light. May all be blessed with spiritual light and spiritual awakening, which is true freedom. And where there is sadness, let me sow a tremendous amount of joy. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Lift that loving energy to the crown and exhale and stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Be aware of the golden light on your crown. Let it flow down through your hands. 
And bless your family, your friends, your relatives, people you work with. Let that golden light just keep spreading throughout the city, your country. Let it spread throughout the entire earth. Just say, our souls are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Now, be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale, imagine even brighter golden light just pouring out of our hands and flooding the entire earth. Just say, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit and through my soul, may every person, every being on earth, without exception, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension, every direction, above and below, May all beings in the physical world and the non-physical world be blessed with God's non, <coughs> with unconditional God's unconditional love and kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. May all be blessed with divine oneness. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and especially the willingness to do good. May all be blessed. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Blessings be to all. Blessings be to all. Now lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Be still. Imagine a brilliant light, a brilliant star just floating above your head. Look at that brilliant light. It's free to radiate light anywhere. Be as bright as it can be and radiate light to the entire universe. It is free to radiate light. You are that light. Be aware of your heart. Send a stream of love up to the crown and into that brilliant star. Ah. And just let your awareness and your consciousness settle in that light. The image doesn't have to be clear. It is there. Just silently say, I am that. Free and whole. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. And listen. Amen. that light. You are that light. Amen. Your consciousness is merging with that light. Om.
You are one with that light. You are that light. Be still. Be aware of this oneness. And just simply let go. And let things be now. Let go, let go, be free, now. Gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly, come back to your physical form, come back to your physical body. Gently move your fingers and toes, just move your body a little bit. Allow the soul to come back <laughs> more into your body. You gotta get on with your day. Now raise your hands in blessing. We'll release the excess energies our bodies cannot absorb. So visualize all the people you love in front of you. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spirituality. May all be blessed. So be it. So be it. And so it is. May all be blessed. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light downwards into the earth. Fill the earth below you with golden light. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. To my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tahok Sri Mahagur Jumailing, we thank you for your immense blessings. In full faith. And so it is. All right. That's what I had planned. I thought it would be a short 10-minute talk, meditate, and we're out of here. Oops. Anyway, I hope you got something out of it. And uh, just one thing came into mind today. Uh, oftentimes, the reason we're not free, because we're in a prison of crystallized thoughts and emotions. When I say crystallized, it's not just that aura is filled with stuff and emotion. It's preconceived ideas. Thoughts and emotions that might or might not have any... <laughs> basis in reality, but they've been crystallized. Somebody told you this when you grew up, or due to political reasons, you think a certain way, or you've been hurt with someone, so you generalize that every person that you meet similar to this person has the same negative trait, whatever it is, these thoughts and emotions are crystallized thoughts and in, inside or like you're in a shell. So we have to break those shell by first what? Disidentifying, realizing, hey, we created these. Number two, do a meditation, spiritual practice to disintegrate them. And number three, be infused with the divine energy and be filled with love, with light, 
joy, peace, so we can make better decisions. Now, just a side note, I know some of you mentioned the, in the comments, like, yeah, that's good and great, but, you know, I have certain people that keep projecting negative energy, negative thoughts at me. Okay. Now, with that, good thing, we have technique. So there's this um, protect yourself from negative energy. It's an ongoing introductory workshop that's going on. You're welcome to watch it. Just go to, on anyway, online.mastercode.org slash protect yourself from negative energy. <laughs> so we post it on it so you can like it's a free workshop if you want to take it further uh there's the intense one day workshop that's coming up in a couple weeks if you're you have a u.s address right other than that we wish all of you here in the united states a happy fourth of july of course the meme that was just made the fourth be with you you know like star wars they talk about the life force by the way in that movie of course they take it anyway let's not get into it all right so we wish you uh Fantastic 4th of July. Be happy, be healthy, enjoy, party, but don't do something stupid. <laughs> I think you, go, you know that already. By the way, just as I know, just want I add it in there. You know, some people are imprisoned by alcohol, imprisoned by drugs and all that. So they think they're free to do this, right? They're free. They don't realize every time they talk, they take those things, they're adding one more bar to their prison. Keep that in mind. Just when you say, oh yeah, I'm free to party. Yep, you are to free to party. But anytime you do something that is hurtful to you, guess what? You're adding one more bar to that prison. Something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, I think you had enough of me for one day. So the plan is uh, for now, we're not sure if we're going to have the second session because, you know, some people have said they want to spend more time with family and have a Happy 4th of July party. They don't want to be stuck watching this, you know, Asian dude yakking on video. So we're not sure if we'll do it or not. But anyway, if we do it, we do it. If not, we'll see you Wednesday morning. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time.